Welcome to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I'm Mr. Rogers, and this is going to be part one of a multi-part series about reconstructing an Alienware Area 51 R2. As you can see, the chassis is right here. Uh, I'm about to walk you through part selection, uh, the parts that I chose and procured, um, why I chose them, and sort of what we can expect out of this. Um, part two, which will be the next video, is going to be about actually constructing the machine um, and getting it to the point where it posts. The third video is going to be benchmarking, testing, and so forth, uh, performance tuning as well. And the final video will be about trying to sell the machine. So I'm going to kind of take you from A to Z in this whole process. Okay, so first things first. This is the Alienware Area 51 R2 chassis. It includes, and it's heavy, it's about 60 pounds, empty. We have the 80 bronze, 850 watt power supply, uh, the Alienware uh, custom X99 motherboard, which I believe is an MSI variant. All of the cabling, uh, intake fan, memory fan, everything is here to make a beast of a machine. Okay? So, let's just move this monstrous chassis over here. Okay? First things first, when I was looking for parts for this, I wanted to have a lot of fun with this and really make a uh, a powerful machine, at least as powerful as I could do for something still running X99, which is you know now a sunsetted platform. Okay, um, you could you could take the motherboard out and and fit in an X299 probably. I just didn't want to go there with it. I wanted to keep it a little bit more um, in line with what it would have had, but a little bit updated, modernized, if you will, and. I found a super sweet deal on an unopened, completely sealed, in the plastic, Core i7 5960X. Okay, this is an 8 core 16 thread, 40 PCIe lean processor. It's the Extreme Edition from uh, Haswell. Okay, it's a monster, and uh, it's going to compete right up there with, with any of the 8 core 16 thread X299 chips once it gets a little overclock, which we certainly will, will do to it, okay? So that's the processor, i7-5960X. Graphics cards. One, two, GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition graphics cards. We're gonna run them in SLI. Uh, the 850 watt power supply should be enough, um, but uh, if we run into problems there, we may have to, to upgrade the power supply. But um, uh, some of these uh, motherboards don't do great with aftermarket power supplies, so I want to try it with the stock one. Um, it should have enough power to run both of these and the 5960X and all of our other components, but we'll see. Um, so we've got two GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition 8 gig GDDRX. Um, we do have the SLI high bandwidth bridge from NVIDIA, three slot should be the right uh, configuration for this. Um, this is going to allow the maximum throughput through the two cards, all the data that's going through them should, uh, should at least give us our best chance to run SLI pretty well. Okay, I've never done an SLI uh, build before, I've always gone for one stronger card. My actual computer uses a, a 1080 Ti, um, but I think this could be pretty cool to put two 1080s in SLI with all the PCIe lanes we have with the 5960X, it's gonna be awesome. All right, for RAM, again, the Alienware motherboards are a little bit finicky with their RAM, uh, so I kind of went the safe route. I went with HyperX Fury. Uh, this is DDR4 uh, 2666 megahertz, quad channel. It's four four gig sticks, it's gonna give us 16 gigs. I thought about going for 32 gigs, um, but RAM is so expensive right now, and I just, uh, I don't think it really needs it, um, but 
you know, leave your comments, let me know if I'm crazy for only putting 16 gigs in a machine with a 5960X and two GTX 1080s. It does seem a little weird, but, uh, you know, I think it's gonna actually be, be quite all right. For storage, we got a couple options here. We got a Western Digital Blue one terabyte drive. That's gonna go in there, 7200 RPM. Uh, that's gonna be our storage drive, one of them. We have a one terabyte Samsung 860 Evo. That's gonna be our main drive with our OS. And we have an additional uh, 250 gig Samsung 850 Evo that'll be um, a, a backup or a storage drive. So we've got multiple storage options. The Area 51 R2 has room for two 2.5 inch drives and another, I think, three uh, 3.5 inch drives. So we should be totally fine there. Okay, so I wanted to keep it authentic. I picked up an Alienware, I'm gonna bring this around so you can see it. An Alienware's uh, uh, OEM uh, liquid cooling unit. I don't know how this will perform with a 5960X overclocked. Uh, I've never used such a small liquid cooler. However, again, the motherboards on these, I've heard spacing issues with aftermarket coolers, and I sort of just uh, am limited by the back uh, fan size here. So we're gonna we're gonna try this uh, And we may just have to uh, adjust our performance accordingly for peripherals Alienware Pro gaming keyboard and the Alienware 558 uh, mouse Okay, so we're gonna sort of have a matching theme here uh, Alienware doesn't make a 4k monitor at the moment um, So and I wanted to really be able to test this rig 4k Gaming, video editing, all of that in a natural environment, something that you would have at home. So what I've gone with is an AO AOC Aegon 27 inch 4K G-Sync display. Uh, it's probably the best value on the market. Good, good color, IPS, um, and should allow us to uh, check out the games in 4K and see how well this whole SLI rig works. Okay. So that's a, a quick rundown of the parts that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm hoping to get this build together probably by the end of the weekend, and then we'll be spending next week performance testing and, and tuning it, and then we'll get on to the sales part. Um, I hope that for the sales part, anybody who's interested in buying this machine will easily be able to watch these very videos, see the components I've chosen. There's no cheap crap. Okay, this is all good stuff. Um, all high-end uh, uh, components here, except for the power supply. Um, and again, like I said, that's because they're kind of finicky, and I'd like to see if it'll work with this power supply uh, out of the gate first before maybe trying to upgrade it, okay? But otherwise, somebody who's looking to buy a machine um, is going to be able to watch these videos and determine, okay, hey, there's the parts he picked. Okay, here, there's the installation. There's the benchmarking. You know, when I get this machine, it's going to perform at 4K or, or 1440p high FPS um, exactly as it, as it did on the video. So that's my goal with the end result. It's something a little new. I don't think I've seen it done before, um, but I think it might be fun and you know, depending on how that goes, use those proceeds to kind of do it again, but with a different machine or, or different components. So um, that's it for the quick part rundown. Everything that you see here, you'll be seeing in more depth in the next video when we do the build guide. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, leave comments uh, down below. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Um, let me know if you think I'm an idiot or you think this is kind of cool. Uh, and then, you know, I'll see you next time and we'll be digging in with some thermal paste and uh, probably need to scrounge up some screws as well. All right. Thank you guys.